the all-girl band of women artists who couldn't play any instruments. We were founded during the no-wave music scene in Lower Manhattan when everybody was in multiple bands, but they all knew how to play instruments. I didn't know how to play an instrument, and I had my girlfriends who didn't know how to play an instrument. So we started an all-girl punk rock band of women who couldn't play any instruments. Um, and we were active. 1978, we were founded. Barbara Kruger wrote a couple of wonderful songs for us. Then she left, and then Donna Hennis came in, and Diane came, and Alona came. Anyway, the membership of the band was fluent for a while. Um, oh yes, there's, a, there's a, uh, a viewing room in the back where this band is performing. Um, we disbanded, so we were formed in 1978 and we disbanded in 1982. Ronald Reagan had been elected in 1980. And Ronald Reagan wanted to kill off the National Endowment for the Arts. Uh, he was openly hostile to whatever it was that the downtown community was doing. So we played the members of Ronald Reagan's cabinet. Um, his secretary of the interior was James Watts, so Alona was James Watts a tree, and I was Alexander M. Plague Jr. instead of Alexander M. Haig Jr. Uh, so we were the members of Ronald Reagan's cabinet, and then the band disbanded. So I kept going as Alexander for one performance, and I tried doing Ronald Reagan for one performance, and I was not happy with how that turned out. And then uh, I found Nancy. Nancy was advising Ronald Reagan uh, on, based on astrology. <laughs> and she was also a spendthrift. She, the first thing she did when she got to the White House, even though the country was in a recession, she bought an entirely new set of china for the dinner parties that they were having. Um, she was pretty unguarded in the press. I could just read the paper, underline what she had actually said, and then I had my script for my next performance. So I was Nancy uh, for all of the Reagan years, and then George W. H. W. Bush was elected, so I started doing Barbara Bush. I got the wig, I got the suit, I got the pumps, and I did a couple of performances as Barbara. And then um, Clinton was elected. Uh, Bill Clinton came out at the MTV inaugural ball, the MTV. Music television, this was a new thing. The youth of America was listening to music and on television. So the MTV inaugural ball is a huge room full of young people in a causeway that goes out into this sea of young people. And Bill Clinton comes out, our president comes out playing the saxophone. The youth of America was just overjoyed. Oh my God, our president is playing the saxophone. It was fantastic. And then Hillary comes out after, after uh, Bill, and then Al comes out after Hillary, and then Timber comes out. And the, the, the room shifted, the mood in the room shifted. And somebody started booing her, and then everybody started booing her. And they booed her off the stage. They booed Timber Gore off the stage. Does anybody here know why Tipper Gore was booed off the stage? She had gotten parental advisory language put on records and CDs. It's a little, it's still there. It's a little yellow patch with red type and it tells you that there's dirty language on this record and you shouldn't buy it for your kid. The kids, of course, had not forgotten. <laughs> that she had successfully gotten parental advisory language applied to their records and CDs. Um, so they booed her off the stage. So I thought, oh, 
I'm going to do Tipper for the Clinton years. Then George H.W. Bush, uh, he was no longer president, sorry, George W. Bush got elected, so I had the wig, so I became the mother of the president. Some of those performances are from the point of view of the mother of the president. Um, and then uh, Trump, Thumb, was elected. Um, and I had always tried to understand these characters, go into Barbara Bush's brain, and go into Nancy Reagan's brain, and go into Tipper Gore's brain, and understand them, and perform from their point of view, so that I could be in another being, and then I could leave at the end. Uh, so I tried to go into Donald, and I got the suit, I got the tie, I got the wig, and I went as deeply as I could into Donald, and I couldn't find any there there. There was no, there was no, he's, he's so impulsive that he doesn't have, there's nothing there. <laughs> so I'm performing as Donald Trump, but I'm talking about how I, Martha Wilson, dressed up as Donald Trump, have seen the political and art scene change during the last 50 years. And, but you, you were also Melania a little bit, no? Oh, I did a, I did a Melania piece. Um, it's a, a, there was an earlier piece called Makeover that shows Martha Wilson turning into Catherine Deneuve. Uh, Catherine Deneuve in 1974, when she was doing Chanel ads, she was the most beautiful woman on the planet. Everybody felt that way. So I turned myself into Catherine Deneuve. It's a piece called Makeover. So for this video, it's called Makeover Melania. And it, st it starts as Martha Wilson's face, and then it transforms into Melania Trump's face. Um, and then it goes back to Martha Wilson, and then it goes back to Melania Trump. It's um, a collaboration with Nancy Burson. Nancy Burson designed the software. You probably don't know anything about this, so I'll just make it fast. Uh, a little boy disappeared in Soho in 1977, Aton Potts. So she was living in Soho, and she developed the software to age him so we could tell what he was, looked like at age seven. And then that image was published on milk cartons so we could see what he would look like at age seven and see what he might look like at age eight. Then she developed that software further so that we could turn ourselves into Elvis Presley or we could turn ourselves into Andy Warhol. And then she developed it even further and did a piece called One where she, by racial proportion, put together all the faces of all the women in the entire world and all the men in the entire world. So Nancy Person was the right person to call. I bought, I bought the image of, of uh, Melania Trump from Reuters News Service, and then she took the photo of me, and then she emerged. put us together. Yeah, it looks a bit like these flip postcards. Yes, yeah. a little bit, yeah. It has been shown here at yeah. Gallery Krone, some, yeah. I think in November. It yeah. was. Um, well, maybe we could also then open up to the audience for questions. And uh, but one more question would be: uh, Do you think how, in a sort of political um, or in in this way of maybe also feminism, Me Too debates, or like in the current situation? What would you say? How could we move on? And I and then there was the money thing. We forgot. <laughs> we also wanted to talk about money, and, <laughs> but <laughs> and how this sort of works in a social female context. But yeah, maybe as somebody else can as well. Ask well, let's let's do feminism first. <laughs> um, we use the term feminism as if it means something. 
when Renata and I can assure you that back in the day, the feminists could not agree on what feminism was. Was it pattern and decoration? Was it central imagery? Was it the goddess? Was it band? All girl bands of women artists who couldn't play any instruments. Uh, was it photo text work? Um, were we supposed to all be lesbians now? Were we allowed to wear makeup? There was no agreement at all as to what feminism was, and we were just yelling at each other all the time. <laughs> so I think it's kind of funny now that um, we use this term like it means something. Um, what, what do you want to say about... Wait, no, you, more sort of like what it means, but maybe that's too sort of... Where does it go, or what would you, where would you bring it today, or? Yeah. But um, I mean, the 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 society was hostile to feminism and women, and it's still hostile to feminism and women, and certainly in the United States. I don't know about here. Meanwhile, the art world is finally discovering feminists of the seventies, <laughs> just pretty sweet, I guess, after, after all this time. Um, Hillary was not elected because she's a woman. That is just what happened. And, but you have Angela Merkel, so, you know, sometimes the rest of the world is hipper to, to women than the United States. Yeah, but I think there's also a lot on, you know, like sort of lobbying, supporting, network. I mean, I think not only between women, also between minority groups, yeah, or, you know, sort of like uh, some kind of a, or a big form of responsibility. Mm -hmm. And uh, and still there is, and I still think also then, I mean, after that, like somehow also the money issue comes in of like how, you know, how, what you, um, what did you say the other day, like, or yesterday, if I would have